Hey golfers, Thomas and Drew here from Second Swing Golf at Les Bolstead Golf Course today. We're gonna to be doing an on-course review of the Arcos GPS system. And so, of course, we've got it installed into our golf clubs today. We're gonna to use the both mobile app and the uh, GPS tracker as well. We're gonna be getting some stats, information about our game. Thomas, I know you're familiar with Arcos, so I know you're really excited about what Arcos uh, provides for you. Yeah, I've been playing with it for almost a year now. It's been great. I've had my phone in my pocket, kind of tracking every single golf shot, and it's been telling me my stats for my golf game, and it's been very beneficial to help my golf game out. All right, we're gonna test it out. We're gonna show you guys some of the benefits and, uh, and why you guys should be using Arcos and why it can really help your game and lower your score. All right, well, let's play nine holes at Les Ballstead. We're at Les Ballstead course. I'm selecting the gold tees, we're playing the maroon tees there. Hole one, start round. Nice thing with the Arcos caddy function here is it can tell you which club to use. Now this is in the non-tournament mode. If you're playing in a tournament, uh, depending on the tournament, you may not be able to use this particular function, but if you're just playing casually, it's nice because it gives you a suggestion of what club you're gonna hit, and then how to track your way around the golf course. If I was going to turn this back to tournament mode here, It'll still give me the distance to that spot, but it won't tell me what club to use, essentially. It won't be my caddy as much, but it's still very beneficial even in tournament mode. Okay, I just hit my first drive on the first hole at Les Ballstead. You will notice here it says shot detected. I used my driver, so it's already picking up. The fact that I hit my driver from you know, five yards away here, it's telling me driver detected. I hit it a little bit left, a little bit through the fairway, so it's gonna be interesting to find out where my ball ends up. I'm gonna guess it's gonna be fairly close to the tree over here, just through the fairway straight through. We'll find out where my golf ball ends up. So, just got to my golf ball here. We'll notice it says 274 yards from the last shot. That is in the non-tournament mode. It'll tell you how far you hit your last drive. Kinda of notice that I'm just kinda of stuck behind this tree a little bit, as you can see on the, on the GPS. Pretty, pretty accurate based on where I hit my drive and where I was expecting my ball to be. Left myself a pretty tough shot here. Got to go straight over this tree. Got about 80 yards. Just snuck through. Nice shot. Ooh, good run. Place down on one of those days again. Burning edges. Yeah. Oh my god. And Arcos told me to hit seven iron, so I'm gonna hit seven iron. Just a little short. A little, a little breeze short. there. Arcos no was not wrong on the breeze. I'm also hitting a seven. Is that far a good swing? Is that far enough? Oh! Yep. It's right on it. That's pretty good. Uh, uh. Greens are fast. Good pot. Thank you. Very nice. So hole three here at Les Ballstead Golf Course, there is some elevation from this tee shot. So you'll notice if we click here, it says minus 38 feet. So it also looks like we've got a little wind into us. We can click here and we can notice how the slope will affect the uphill or downhill train by 13 yards. So the drive should go about 13 yards further than normal. Uh-oh. That was not the way I wanted to go. Well, there's room over there. Boom. Yeah, that's perfect, isn't it? That's money right there. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna be playing about 100 yards longer of a shot than you are. <laughs> the nice thing with our calls too is if we hit the ball right and we're looking for a golf ball, for example, we're looking for Drew's, uh, Drew's drive here. It says we're about 265 yards from the tee. 
So depending on where you are, it will tell you how far away you are from the tee. So if you think you hit your driver around about 260, you think the golf will be kind of around about this location. Did not see it. Right in the jaws. Okay, so Thomas, we're midway through the round two. We've, we're set up with Arcos, um, but what are kind of all the ways people can get set up with Arcos? There's more than just kind of through the mobile app where the phone is kept in our pocket, right? So we got a couple more that we can talk about here. Yeah, the important thing is your phone has to be in your left front pocket if you're gonna be using that. Now, it's great if you've got a small phone, so I actually personally went out and bought the iPhone SE, so I knew this is a very, very small mm -hmm. phone, so I can kind of grab it and look at the GPS functions at any time. But you'll kind of notice the size of my real phone <laughs> <Yeah>. is uh, <laughs> quite large. So if I was going to fit that in my pocket, front left pocket here, it would definitely bother me in my yeah. swing. So there's a couple of different options. So if you have an Apple Watch, you can use your Apple Watch to hit shots and it'll pick up the, pick up the shot GPS function wise as well. There's also the Arcos Caddy Link. So the link here is a it's kind of a little belt clip essentially. You can kind of put this one straight onto your belt clip and kind of just have it synced right right on here. And then essentially you can just kind of play around. And then when you hit a golf shot, this will, you know, the, the battery sensor in the top of the grip will pick up that you're hitting a golf shot. Okay. Yeah. So there's there's different options that you that you have. If you have an, like I mentioned, the, the watch, if you don't want something in your pocket, is definitely a good option. Mm -hmm. I don't have an Apple Watch. I just have a, a Samsung um, large, large phone here. So <laughs> it gets, it would get in the way. Yeah, sure. Yeah. And the other thing to keep in mind too, there's three different options with regards to the sensors. Yeah. So to uh, track these shots, you've got these battery sensors in the top of your grips, either pre-built in or you have the screw-in type, what you were playing with this morning here too, that you screwed in. Or there's actually partnerships with certain manufacturers, Ping, Cobra, Cobra Connect, they have them pre-built in there and they give you a pre, mm -hmm. uh, free trial essentially if you buy a certain amount of golf clubs with those manufacturers there too. So. Yeah, so the nice thing with Ping and Cobra too is their stock grips include the Arco sensors in them already. So like I have this uh, G425 Fairywood here and you can see this is a stock grip here that came with the club. You can see the sensor is already in there. So that's just a heads up or a kind of a head start for golfers that want to get into Arcos. And then, uh, you know, with the rest of my clubs, I just got the, uh, the screw in sensor on the top there. So um, now I'm all set up. I mean, it's as simple as that. Yeah, with all my clubs, I already have the pre built Arcos. Uh, I have a Lampkin full cord grip on this one. The only club that I had to do the screw in was the putter because the putter has got a different grip on yeah. it. But mm -hmm. yeah, it's uh, really easy to use. It picks up the shot every single time. It's great. Yeah, so as a reminder for golfers, you can also go to secondswing.com and order your screw and sensors as well and a whole setup for you. Also, you can order the link on secondswing.com as well. So whichever way is going to work best for you. Um, but either way, again, as you'll see in this video, we do recommend uh, with all the information that Arcos is going to give you to get this set up for your game. So we're through what, four holes? The short game has stumbled me quite a bit. Uh, I'm three over with three bogeys and a par at this point. But uh, a couple of short putts here and there have cost me my strokes. But I think hitting the ball okay, but it's nice to have this information though. Yeah, and we'll see after nine holes when we end the round to see all your stats um, based yeah. on what, what was good, what needs to be worked on. Yeah. And the nice thing with the Arcos app, it gives you like your top three things to work on and top three things that are doing, you're doing really well. So it's kind of nice that it kind of gives okay. you a recommendation there. Uh, I'm one under through four, just made a nice putt there. I made a couple of nice putts actually, so it's kind of nice. Nice save on hole two for par after a, a bad chip, but let's keep it rolling here. We've got five more holes to play. All right. So I'm being told the GPS distance to the middle of the green is 165-ish, um, and it's giving me another 10 yards to play based on the wind and maybe the slope a little bit as well. Um, we got it wind into us here at about seven miles an hour, so. I got a seven iron here. So and I actually seven. shot the yardage with my rangefinder. It actually said actual distance is 158, so it's a front flag. Okay. Uh, our coast will tell us to the to the middle of the green how far it is. 
Uh, right. But with the wind, we know it's going to play a little bit further than that. So it's probably okay. going to be that plus, uh, we we're talking probably about, about and plus 10 yards essentially. Okay. Seeing with the wind plus nine, with the slope minus one, and with the temperature plus two. So it's telling us to play the shot 11 yards further. So I'm going to play it basically 170. Okay. So is that going for flag or is that going for middle of the green? That's going for flag. Okay. You know what? I, I thought about going for this middle of the green. I kind of want to go for flag now. That's the wrong miss. Oh yeah. Ooh, a little deep. A little deep. Shot, though. It was right on top of the flag. Straight through the wind. Good putt. I almost missed that. We're a little left. That might be close to the bunker. Might have could have carried down the wind like this. Okay, so we're on hole nine here, par five, 480 yards. One of the nice things also with the Arcos using the GPS function when you're playing your round is you can uh, kind of highlight where your tee shot, you think your tee shot's going to end up. So you can drag based on how far you think you're going to hit your tee shot. So I'm going to anticipate that I'm going to be close to about 300 off the tee. So if I was, say I hit it 300 yards off the tee here, I would leave myself 175 yards into the green from that particular position. If you wanted to play this hole a little bit differently, so maybe you don't hit the ball as far and you want to lay up short of the bunkers, you can select how far it is to the bunkers here. So we'll notice we've got 251. With the wind helping, the green number that, that is the Arcos caddy, Talons is actually playing 239. So if I was to lay up short of the bunkers, I would need to hit four iron off the tee. If I want to try and carry the bunkers, I'm going to make sure I'm going to need to at least hit three wood or more to make sure I get over the bunkers here too. So I'm hoping I can get it just a little over 300 off the tee. We've got downwind tee ball here. I'm going to leave myself maybe a, a nine iron or a, or mm. eight iron into the green and hopefully finish off with another birdie. Yeah, I'm going to try and smoke. I mean, like like you're talking about the carry distance right there. So there's two bunkers out there. I got to carry it about 265, 270. I'm going to hit my three wood. I don't have the driver, as you may have noticed. So I got to carry the three wood far enough, and we'll see if I can do it. I think you got it. That is smashed. That's a little far Ten left, left though. though. Oh, you got the trees. Lumber. That's a waste of a short par five. Hey, maybe. Maybe. You might still have a shot. I think you probably will. No. Nope. It would help if one of them hit it straight, but, well, not a very good tee shot. Hit the top of this tree here which is going to affect my uh, Arcos driving stats because the drive is going to be a lot shorter on the sole. Got to hit a big hook around this tree. Nice shot. Thank you. Ouch. <sighs> Playing too much break on a short putt. Okay, so I just clicked end round after nine holes. So we've got nine hole stats here to talk about. 
I went back into the round to modify where the flag location was on the green and how far away my first part was. It's pretty, pretty close, but it's not going to be perfect. So you can actually click on where it says the putter and then you can actually drag, you can actually drag the flag location on the green and how far away your first putt was on the green. And that way it's going to help with your stats a little bit there too. So each of the nine holes, I like to go onto the, onto the green and just kind of take a look. I like to modify how far away I was. So I kind of modify, make a modification. And then we can take a look at my putting stats and be more realistic, essentially. Mm -hmm. So if you can remember how far you had to putt on each green, that is also very helpful. Yeah, so I, I, what's eye-opening for me, you know, I, I didn't play my best round, right? And so um, as a, in total, I lost 4.3 strokes, just the nine holes there, um, compared to, I, you know, it comp kind of compares you to other players of your handicap. Um, and so I can see here on my strokes gained, you can kind of see after, you know, nine holes, it's got your driving, your approach play, your short game, and your putting. Um, for me, my approach play was the key, um, the big negative there. I lost two shots, over two shots, just on approach according to this strokes gain metric. So, and looking back at my round, I can see that, you know, my, my approach shot on the couple, well, all the par threes essentially, were not that great. And so, uh, especially the last two. So that, that's something I can take away. And like you mentioned before, where it gives give you some things that you can improve on and things that you kind of are doing the best. And you can definitely see that here with the way they lay this out. Yeah, and you can uh, find this information by clicking on your activity. And then under that round, you can click on stats. So for me, I'm kind of loading mine. I compare this to a zero handicap. You can actually change whatever handicap you want to compare this mm -hmm. to. So if you want to change this to, say you're a, say you're a 10 handicap, go, go for it essentially. You can apply those selections and then your strokes gains will change yeah. based on what your handicap is. So I'm going to go back to a, a scratch. I'm, I'm probably more like a plus four essentially. So let's go back to like a plus four. And let's just see how I compared to a plus four handicap for those nine holes. So my strokes gain breakdown, I was plus 0 0.9 for those nine holes. I shot two under, 33 on the front nine. My biggest gain was through driving. So I picked up 0 0.6 strokes in shots gain on driving. And you can also click on the driving and select why that you, uh, why that you picked up those strokes gains essentially. From what I could see here, it's based on distance. So distance on the tee. My average distance was 287, my longest drive was 311, so that way I can kind of see how my distance was. I can also see my accuracy. So I hit, I only hit 33% of the fairways, missed left 50% of the time, and missed right 17% of the time. And you can also see hole by length, so you can see where I picked up my strokes gains mm -hmm. based on the hole by length there too. And you can do this under every different category. Um, the other thing I like about this here too is it gives you round highlights, so it gives you stats, fairways, greens, Putts, up and downs, average approach distance to the green, so you know what distance that you want to work on there too. And then I do like if you scroll down the round insight. So this is what I was talking about earlier, where it gives you some three things that, that work for your game and three things that ga your game need to work on. So let's click on what, what hurt me the most. It was my putting game from 10 to 25 feet. Apparently I lost minus 1.2 shots gains. I burned a lot of edges, yeah. and that just kind of seems like it's going to be in the story of that there too. Shots from the fairway, zero, negative 0 0.1. So basically I was playing to about a plus four handicap from the strokes from the fairway. Uh, short game, I was basically about the same there as well. So negative 0 0.1 on shot gain. So mm -hmm. putting for me still need to be work on. Let's see what, what helped me the most. So my putting game from long range, 25 to 50 footer. I made that 30 footer on the, yeah. on the fourth hole there. So that helped out as well. Um, driving game, d driving distance here, plus 0 0.5. So my distance is helping me as well. And my par three tee shots, we played, uh, we played three par threes on, on that nine. One came up just a little bit short of the green and the other two I hit pretty close and I hit some really good shots on hole five and hole eight mm. there, which is gonna help with my, uh, my score in there too. And you see your scoring analysis. Unfortunately, I hurt my par five scoring stats by missing that short putt there on the yeah. last hole. That's gonna kind of haunt me a little bit. <sighs> so that was a little frustrating. Tried to play outside the hole and there was no break, but uh, yeah, so it's really interesting. You can really analyze all the data you need to look at. Mm -hmm. Driving, approach game, um, short game, putting. It's, it's really good stuff. Yeah, and it gives you personal best. And then what I like and what I'll continue to use here, I know you've been using it for a while, so you have this data all on there, but previous rounds can kind of compare. Um, you know, maybe you can identify trends in the last five rounds, last 10 rounds, what you're doing well, what you're not doing well, uh, more than just one round. I only have one round on here because this is my first round with Arcos. Um, but that's just another tool that this can really you, uh, give you and 
I think the most important part of this is the information. You, know, you get information about your game uh, that you wouldn't get elsewhere. So that's why I'm so intrigued by this and why I want to continue using it is just the information you get about your game. You're going to know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and probably they're going to be different than what you may perceive, which is something I'm already noticing here just on nine holes. I mean, it's telling me my best trait was putting. And <laughs> I mean, maybe that's just a, a, you know, a sign for how bad the other parts of my game were today. But interesting that that is what I would perceive as my weakness. So interesting, yeah. I'll take that with me as I play more rounds. And when you do play more rounds, if you click on clubs, you can see there are average distances for those particular clubs. Now I'm showing my stats here for my average distances. Mm -hmm. This is over since June of 2020. So I started applying. So this is over a whole bunch of rounds now. But you can see that my paired clubs, how far every club goes for me. So I know on the golf course when I'm not using the Arcos Smart Caddy, so when I have to have it in tournament mode, I already know the distances. So I can yeah. write these down on a piece of paper. I know these numbers. Some people like to put their numbers on their shaft of their golf club. Some people like to have a little, a little notebook to know their distances. But it also kind of shows you your smart range, shows you the longest shot that you ever hit. So we'll notice when I click here, 378 yards is my longest drive that I've hit in the last <laughs> Uh, last like 10 months, this is pretty cool. Uh, green and regulation based on each club that you use. So if I look here, my eight iron was performing pretty well. So I would want to click on, I'd want to leave myself an eight iron into the green because I know that I hit the green 80% of the time with my eight iron. And then usage. So then you can see how often you have used that club. So as I mentioned, I've got quite a lot of data here. I've got paired clubs for a driver. I've hit my driver 421 times That's, that has been registered with the Arcos there. And actually, if you look down here, putter has been. A, 1,273 times. So you can see which club you use the most, which club you don't use the most, and you can kind of know what you got to work on. So it's really good stuff. Uh, I love Arcos. I think it's great. I think just showing the in-course use here today is kind of a nice benefit that you've got. You've got that GPS system mm -hmm. to use. Yeah, it's really good. And uh, we'd also recommend, and of course, you can get talk to Second Swing and get set up with one yourself as well. Uh, but this is, I mean, this is a ton of information about your game that you really didn't know you needed, uh, but it's a great way to improve. So. Um, I think, I mean, that's, I mean, we could, I mean, we're just getting started. We could talk all day about our coast and what it can provide you. But basically the best way to really find out for yourself is to get set up through Second Swing with a unit for yourself and all of your clubs. Get the mobile app downloaded and set yourself up with a membership with our coast. So Thomas, thanks for joining today, playing some good golf and uh, showing everybody what it's about. Yeah, not a problem.